John Calvin's exposition on Galatians 2.15. 16. Emphasizes Paul's assertion that justification is through faith in Jesus Christ, not by the works of the law. Calvin elucidates that Paul's discourse addresses the misconception that adherence to Old Testament ceremonial laws could render a person righteous before God. Calvin argues that such a belief erroneously suggests that human merit can secure divine favor, which contradicts the covenantal principle that requires perfect obedience, something impossible for humans to achieve. Calvin delves into the distinction between Jews and Gentiles, accentuating that even Jews, who were God's chosen people and recipients of the law, were not inherently righteous. The Jews, by virtue of their heritage, believed they had a special status that made them more acceptable to God. However, Calvin asserts that this special status did not exempt them from the need for faith in Christ for justification. He contends that Jews, like Gentiles, were equally in need of God's grace, as no one can attain righteousness through their own efforts. Calvin criticizes the arrogance and ingratitude of the Jews, who presumed their status made them superior to the Gentiles. This pride led them to mistakenly believe they had earned God's favor, failing to recognize that their blessings were due to God's grace. Calvin explains that Paul's message aims to correct this misconception by highlighting that no human effort can merit salvation. It is only through faith in Christ that one can be justified. Calvin's commentary indicates the universality of sin and the necessity of divine grace. He stresses that all humans, regardless of their background, stand guilty before God and need forgiveness and acceptance through faith in Jesus Christ. This doctrine maintains the core Christian belief that salvation is a gift from God, unearned and undeserved, and it aids as a reminder that human efforts are insufficient for attaining righteousness. Calvin's insights reinforce the theological foundation that faith in Christ is the sole means of justification, transcending any human attempt to fulfill the law. Also, Calvin points out the core standard of justification by faith and the nuanced position of the Jews within God's redemptive plan. Calvin starts by noting Paul's debate that Jews, though recipients of greater grace than Gentiles, must not boast. The Jews' privileges, such as circumcision and the covenant, were gifts of God's grace, not rewards for their inherent merit. Paul stresses that these blessings should foster humility and gratitude, rather than pride. Calvin explores Paul's seemingly contradictory statements in Romans. Initially, Paul reiterates that Jews have a unique status because of God's covenant and promises, which places them in a stance of greater blessing. Romans 3, 1, 2. However, Paul also declares that Jews have no ultimate advantage over Gentiles regarding salvation, as both groups are equally under sin and condemnation. Romans 3, 9, 10. This repeats that Jews, despite their special status, need redemption through Christ as much as Gentiles do. Calvin extends this basis to the children of believers, disputing that they are not inherently better than those of non-believers. Nonetheless, these children are sanctified and set apart by God's grace, paralleling how Jews were distinguished in the past. This sanctification is a supernatural gift, reflecting God's gracious selection rather than any human merit. In Galatians, Paul underlines that justification comes not through the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. This truth applies equally to Jews and Gentiles. Calvin concludes that any grace received from God should lead to reliance on Christ alone for salvation, not on human merit. Christ's peace, preached to both those far off, Gentiles, and those near Jews, bridges all divides, demonstrating that salvation is fundamentally a matter of divine grace. In this manner, faith in Christ is the sole basis for justification going beyond all ethnic and cultural distinctions. This central Christian doctrine underscores that salvation relies on God's grace, accessible to all through faith in Christ. Moreover, Calvin emphasizes the crucial distinction between justification by faith and by works, accentuating that true righteousness before God is achieved through faith alone. Calvin critiques the Roman Catholic stance that faith, while essential, must be complemented by human merits. This, he argues, fundamentally undermines the Gospel's message. Calvin interprets Paul's statement, by faith, to signify the complete rejection of human efforts to earn God's favour. He contrasts the law and faith. The law demands perfect obedience, which humanity is incapable of accomplishing, hence revealing human insufficiency and condemning them. In comparison, faith acknowledges human inadequacy and depends entirely on Jesus Christ for salvation. To illustrate, 
Calvin uses the analogy of two men seeking food, one wealthy, able to pay for his needs, and the other a beggar, reliant on charity. The rich man, through his resources, compensates his host, eliminating any debt. The beggar, however, relies entirely on the host's generosity, having nothing to offer in return. Similarly, seeking justification through the law requires one to earn righteousness, an impossible task that provokes God's wrath. True justification is thus obtained only through faith, not as a virtue stemming from us, but as a humble recognition of our need for God's grace. Calvin focuses on the objection that since both the law and faith are from God, they cannot be contradictory. He likens this to day and night or fire and water, which, though distinct, help complementary roles ordained by God. The law and faith, properly understood, are harmonious. The law exposes human sinfulness and the need for a saviour, while faith receives the grace provided through Christ. Combining them as if one could merit grace by the law is as contradictory as mixing fire and water. Basically, Calvin affirms that the law shows the need for redemption, and faith alone justifies by receiving God's grace through Christ. This doctrine is vital, asserting the sufficiency of Christ's sacrifice and excluding any human boasting or self-righteousness. Furthermore, Calvin highlights the doctrine of justification by faith in Jesus Christ, indicating its decisive role in salvation. Justification, as Calvin explains, is the act of being deemed righteous in God's sight, a concept fundamental to discerning salvation. He maintains that without this comprehension, one cannot truly know how to be acceptable to God, despite partaking in his blessings. Calvin addresses why Scripture uses the term justify rather than simpler expressions like God's love or pity. He contends that justification encompasses the recognition of our sinful nature and the need of Christ's redemptive work. Trusting in Jesus requires acceptance of our lost state due to Adam's sin and our own iniquities. This agreement is crucial because it uncovers our need to be made right with God. Merely stating salvation by grace and faith is insufficient as it fails to convey the seriousness of sin and God's detestation of it. God's justice and purity demand a hatred of sin, and since humanity is inherently sinful, this implies God's hatred towards us in our natural state. Hence, justification is important for us to be pleasing to God. It involves being cleansed from sin through the blood of Jesus Christ, enabling us to share in God's love and assurance of salvation. Calvin points out that justification means God's forgiveness and cleansing, making us righteous in his sight. He appraises the Roman Catholic view for confusing justification, reiterating that it does not indicate personal perfection, but God's act of covering our sins through Christ's atonement. Calvin supports his discussion with Paul's writings, particularly Romans 4, 6, 7, and 2 Corinthians 5, 21, showing that righteousness is imputed to us through Christ's perfect obedience and sacrifice. To sum up, Calvin clarifies that justification by faith involves God's grace in forgiving and cleansing us, making us righteous through our union with Christ. In addition, Calvin elucidates the profound gravity of faith in Jesus Christ as the base of salvation. He analyzes the superficial understanding of faith as bare belief, repeating that true faith involves a great heartfelt trust in Jesus Christ, the sole object of our faith, and the means of our justification. Calvin underlines that our righteousness before God is attained through the forgiveness of our sins, made possible by Jesus Christ's sacrificial death. It is through Christ's blood that we are cleansed, and by his sufferings and death, the wrath of God is appeased. So Jesus is presented as the Beloved Son, the Righteous One, and the Holy One, in whom we must place our faith for sanctification and justification. Calvin assesses the Catholic perspective of his time, debating that their grasp of faith, as merely believing in the existence of God, falls short of the true transformative faith that leads to salvation. He references James to underscore that minor belief, without evidence of genuine faith through good works, is insufficient. True faith is not just a recognition of God's existence, but a total trust and reliance on Jesus Christ for salvation, resulting in the remission of sins, peace of conscience, and the hope of eternal life. Calvin emphasizes that salvation is not achieved through the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. This convention applies universally to both Jews and Gentiles, nullifying any grounds for pride based on personal virtues or religious observances. Calvin focuses on the self-deception of those who believe they can earn salvation through their merits or good works, accentuating that all human virtues are but filthy rags before God. True humility and recognition of one's sinful nature 
come only through a relationship with Jesus Christ, who alone can redeem and sanctify. In essence, Calvin's commentary affirms that true faith in Jesus Christ surpasses pure belief, embodying a life-changing relationship that brings justification, sanctification, and eternal hope, thus being the only means by which individuals can attain peace with God and be accepted as his children. Further, Calvin asserts the insufficiency of human merits for justification before God. He highlights that even those who outwardly appear devout are condemned if they rely on their own works. Paul's declaration that no flesh shall be justified includes not only unregenerate individuals, but also believers who, despite having the Holy Spirit, remain flawed and imperfect by nature. Calvin elaborates on the inherent sinfulness of human nature, indicating that even the most virtuous biblical figures, such as Abraham, David, Noah, Job and Daniel, could not attain justification through their deeds but solely through God's grace. This maintains the universal need for divine grace, as no human, regardless of their righteousness, can meet God's perfect measure through the law. Calvin warns against the pride of those who believe they can achieve righteousness through their merits, noting that such arrogance is instilled by the devil. Even those who sincerely strive to devote themselves to God, recognizing their important progress in godliness, must acknowledge their inadequacy compared to the biblical paragons of virtue. Paul's claim, as Calvin interprets, delivers to humble all people, demonstrating that any semblance of righteousness we possess is tainted by our inherent sinfulness. This statement is a call to abandon any reliance on self-righteousness and to seek salvation solely through the grace of Jesus Christ. Calvin disputes that without God's transformational work, our outward virtues are sheer vices leading to destruction. In this manner, Calvin concludes that true justification cannot be attained through adherence to the law. All humanity, regardless of their piety, remains condemned if they seek justification by their own efforts. The only path to righteousness and salvation lies in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, compelling us to depend entirely on divine grace. Calvin's interpretation points out the essentiality of divine intervention for true justification, dismissing any notion of self-sufficiency in achieving righteousness before God. Besides, Calvin reiterates the decisive significance of recognizing one's sinfulness as the essential precursor to genuine faith in Jesus Christ. Calvin repeats that true preparation for belief in Christ stems from a vivid awareness of one's spiritual need and sins. This conviction leads individuals to seek refuge in Jesus, echoing his call to the weary and burdened to find rest in him. Matthew 11, 28, 29. Calvin references Isaiah 61, 1 underlining Christ's mission to bring good news to the humble and freedom to captives, underscoring that those who take pleasure in their sins will not genuinely seek the Lord. Calvin comments superficial faith, noting that many profess belief while continuing in sin, hence demonstrating their lack of true faith. He contradicts this with the humility of genuine believers who, aware of their sinfulness, accept their reliance on God's mercy for justification. True believers, according to Calvin, recognize that without God's pity, they would be utterly lost. They do not boast of exhaustive faith, but express it with a profound awareness of their own weakness and need for divine grace. Calvin emphasizes that salvation cannot be achieved through human efforts or merits, but is a gift from God, obtained solely through faith in Jesus Christ. He urges believers to daily confront their sins before God's judgment throne, promoting a godly fear that drives them to seek salvation in Christ alone. This awareness of sin and the need for God's mercy leads to a genuine, burdened repentance, pushing individuals to fully rely on Christ's atoning work for justification. In summation, Calvin calls for a life of humility and entire surrender to Christ, recognizing that all praise belongs to Him. He prays for an increasing awareness and hatred of sin, continuous repentance, and a deepening trust in God's grace through Christ. Calvin envisions this trust growing until believers reach their eternal home, receiving the full reward of their faith. He extends this desire for grace, not only to individuals but to all people, accentuating the universal need for God's mercy and salvation. In conclusion, Calvin affirms Paul's teaching that justification is through faith in Jesus Christ, not by the works of the law. Calvin challenges the misconception that adherence to Old Testament ceremonial laws can render a person righteous before God. He asserts that such a belief wrongly means that human merit can secure divine favour, which contradicts the covenantal foundation that requires perfect obedience, something humans cannot achieve. Calvin dives into the distinction between Jews and Gentiles, 
highlighting that even Jews, God's chosen people and recipients of the law, were not inherently righteous. He judges the Jews' arrogance, noting that their heritage and privileges did not exempt them from the need for faith in Christ for justification. Calvin's commentary indicates the universality of sin and the essential of divine grace, stating that no human effort can merit salvation. It is only through faith in Christ that one can be justified. Additionally, Calvin examines the Roman Catholic stance that faith must be integrated by human merits, arguing that this undermines the Gospel's message. He varies the law and faith. The law demands perfect obedience, disclosing human insufficiency, while faith recognises human inadequacy and depends entirely on Jesus Christ for salvation. Calvin maintains that true justification is achieved by faith alone, excluding any human boasting or self-righteousness. Also, Calvin explains that justification indicates God's forgiveness and cleansing, making us righteous through Christ's atonement. He addresses why Scripture uses the term justify rather than simpler expressions like God's love, pointing out that justification recognises our sinful nature and the fundamental of Christ's redemptive work. Trusting in Jesus requires acknowledging our lost state due to sin, displaying our need to be made right with God. Lastly, Calvin critiques the superficial intuitiveness of faith as simple belief, reiterating that true faith involves rich, genuine trust in Jesus Christ. He repeats that salvation is not achieved through works, but through faith in Jesus Christ, nullifying any grounds for pride based on personal virtues or religious adherences. True faith in Jesus Christ eclipses mere belief, representing a metamorphic relationship that brings justification, sanctification and eternal hope.